Observen ustedes la locura. Y se empató el juego aquí en el inning número 5. Josh Brother, otra vez. Ahora al final. Penales de Lara. Hay peloteros que están destinados a este momento, a estas situaciones de juego. Y se dio la oportunidad una vez más. La pesadilla, Kroger. Qué clase de jugada. Saca, ha dejado en el terreno a Magallanes. Es un solo héroe. Bueno, lo vuelve a ratificar el Josh Kroger. La pesadilla, como se le conoce. Playing, playing in Caracas saved my career in baseball because. Um, It gave me more another life, you know. José Cafecito Martínez aquí presente, desde mi Sport Bar, este, los invito a suscribirse al canal de YouTube de Marcos, ¿ok? Hola, yo soy Marcos Grunfeld, bienvenidos a mi canal de YouTube David Writer. Habíamos hecho una pausa en el último mes y medio en nuestra sección en el Clubhouse, que son las entrevistas que ustedes han podido observar que hemos hecho en los dos últimos años para entrevistar a los atletas de nuestro país y contar las historias de ellos. Tenemos tiempo haciendo ese material, pero durante la cuarentena, producto del coronavirus, habíamos decidido dedicarnos a hacer análisis de la situación en el deporte producto del virus o, en su defecto, recordar momentos especiales con sus protagonistas de la historia de la Liga Venezolana de Béisbol Profesional. Pero para esta edición de The Beat Writer tenemos a un invitado especial, se nos dio la oportunidad y por supuesto que es para nosotros un gran honor recibir a este invitado que llegó desde los Estados Unidos para convertirse en uno de los grandes fenómenos que ha pasado por los Leones del Caracas en los últimos 15 años. Conectamos con Estados Unidos para recibir nada más y nada menos que a Josh Kroger en la próxima hora de En el Clubhouse aquí en The Beat Writer. Le damos la más cordial bienvenida a Josh. Josh, thank you for joining us. Josh, muchísimas gracias por unirte con nosotros en esta conversación, en nuestro espacio en The Beat Writer. Muy agradecidos estamos contigo por haber aceptado la invitación. Es un honor tenerte aquí. Josh, mi primera pregunta es, ¿qué estás haciendo ahorita? ¿Qué te estás dedicando? Capaz hay mucha gente que tiene tiempo sin saber de ti después de que te retiraste. Um, so I'm, I kind of work two jobs now. So, um... First, you know, starting baseball, I uh, I didn't go to college. So when I finished, I went back to college to get my degree. Oh, um, that's great. That, that's, that took me four years to, to get that underway. So during that time, I was coaching and doing uh, hitting lessons uh, for kids uh, locally, um, working at, you know, baseball facilities, uh, that sort of thing for like travel ball, travel baseball. Um, and then for the past two years, as I finished up my degree, uh, I moved into, uh, working in, to, in insurance. Um, so I'm not sure the, the term for that, uh, in Spanish, I think maybe seguros, maybe, um, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. so basically protecting, uh, businesses, um, homes, cars, uh, you know, okay. if they have okay. problems, you know, if the house burns down, you know, you get, you can build your house again, that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, so big, big industry in the United States, um, you know, so I'm trying to combine the two uh, and try to still, still stay connected with baseball. Um, so trying to help a lot of players that I played with and friends and, and family, that sort of thing. Josh, did you remember? Josh, ¿recuerdas cómo empezaste a jugar béisbol? ¿Cómo fue la primera vez que te diste cuenta que te empezaba a gustar el juego? ¿Y en qué momento decidiste a que esto era lo que te ibas a dedicar a tiempo completo? 
Well, I, mean, I think it was just when I was a, when I was a little kid. Um, okay. I grew up watching the San Diego Padres um, and uh, Tony Gwynn and Ken Griffey Jr. were my, my two favorite players. So watching them on TV and, you know, I just wanted to be like them one day um, and I was good at it. So, uh, you know, just now it's different today because we have cell phones and so much uh, social media and everything. So a lot of kids these days, they don't really play outside too much. Um, a lot of distractions. So when I grew up, I didn't have, you know, TV. I didn't have a cell phone. I didn't have any computer or anything like that. So all of my time was spent playing baseball with, with my friends outside. Um, so that kind of just led into high school and um, I was, you know, blessed with the opportunity to be drafted and, you know, continue uh, chasing that dream. Josh, fuiste seleccionado por el, los Diamondbacks de Arizona durante el draft colegial y tuviste la posibilidad de jugar en 2004 en las grandes ligas. ¿Cómo fue esa experiencia para ti y cómo fue o cómo recuerdas el llamado a las grandes ligas? And how did you get the call? Um, so I got the call, you know, that, that year was a great year for me. And, and I started in double A, uh, went to triple A and then went to the major leagues in the same year. Had, you know, it was one of my best years uh, playing. Um, but I remember, I guess the experience was not so good. <laughs> um, you know, like I said, I, I wasn't, wasn't not very successful. Um, you know, a lot of strikeouts. Uh, and I was very young at the time too. I was 22, I had just turned 22 years old. Um, so really coming out of high school, I only played for about four years before I was in the major leagues. Um, so I think when I started to struggle, I didn't understand, I didn't know how to respond to that. Uh, and I had some, some problems there. So, um, you know, my experience in major leagues was great. You know, I, you know, definitely grateful for that. Um, You know, I guess looking back, uh, you always feel like you could have done a little bit more um, to prepare, um, done a little bit more to, to kind of um, study, you know, study the game. And, and you know, I guess you could, it's easy to have regrets, but, uh, you know, I, I wish I would have just had a better, a better experience there as far as performance, you know. But when you... Josh, pero cuando firmaste con los cachorros de Chicago, mejoraste muchísimo en tu ofensiva. Estuve revisando antes de esta entrevista tus estadísticas y cuando jugaste en Iowa te fue muy bien. Yeah, the the that was the year. Good point that you made because that that year with the Cubs in 2007, I think that was the time that I was ready, uh, uh, you know, as a player mentally, you know. Um, okay. Um, to understand how to hit a little bit more, to be more patient. Um, and I started, you know, my numbers started changing. I had a lot more walks um, and less strikeouts. Um, so, you know, that I started to be a better player at that point. And then that was the year that uh, in 2008 that I was able to play with the Leones. So that, that kind of turned over to my best, my best years there, 2007, 2008. How you felt? Josh, ¿cómo te sentiste cuando no recibiste el llamado a las grandes ligas por parte de los Cops? Porque estuve revisando tus números en Iowa, la sucursal AAA de los Cops, y estuviste muy bien esos años. Sí, yeah, uh, you know, it's, it, it can be frustrating, but, you know, uh, also you have to understand that sometimes you can have the best year and you don't have a spot, you know. Um, So, um, and you know, the next year with them as well, I had, I had 300 the next year with them uh, and still didn't have the opportunity. So um, you, it's frustrating, but you know, you, you can't do anything about it. Um, you just got to keep playing and, and do the best you can. And do you remember? Josh, ¿recuerdas cómo fue tu primer contrato en Venezuela, en la Liga Invernal, fue con las Águilas del Zulia? ¿Cómo fue que llegaste a ellos? ¿Cómo te contactaron para que vinieras a jugar? Um, so, in 
2006, uh, my manager in AAA with the Phillies, uh, John Russell, okay. um, I think he spent a lot of time with Baltimore and, and Buck Showalter, I think, uh, in the past few years. But he was my manager, and he, he ended up being the manager for Aguilas. Okay. So he brought me down there um, to help me, uh, you know, improve my hitting and, um, you know, like we talked about, improve my strikeout ratio and all that. So um, that year led into the year with the Cubs that I had such a great year. So um, it was really helpful for me to uh, play down there that year with, with Zulia and, um, you know, having him as my hitting coach and my manager, he kind of, he kind of led me to the next step uh, to be, become a better player. They, they... Josh, ese año, Terminaste la temporada con las Águilas con 354 de porcentaje de envasado y 738 de OPS. Tuviste una temporada decente con ellos. ¿Cómo fue tu salida del club y qué aprendiste con las Águilas? You know, I, I learned uh, a lot more about playing winter ball in general. Um, you know, playing every day in the United States and then coming down there, you can, you can start getting a little tired, you know. Um, But I think it helped me the most uh, to be strong mentally because you have such a long season and then the pressure to go down there and, and to play well. Um, I think that, uh, you know, that was, the, that was the most important lesson, I think, for me going down there. Um, I started off really well. I think I, I, think I made the all-star selection maybe that year um, but then started to – kind of wear, wear down a little bit. And I think I asked for my release there a little before Christmas time. Okay. Uh, and then... Y llegó el momento, Josh, en que llegó el contacto con los Leones del Caracas. ¿Cómo fue eso? ¿Cómo fue tu primer contrato con el club? Uh, so, Jose Escaño was the, okay. was the person that, that connected me there. Uh, we played together with the Cubs in 2000, 2008. Okay. So he uh, he spoke to the general manager in Caracas, um, and uh, he was the one that that really helped me uh, get in touch with the team. Josh, Josh, estaba chequeando ayer antes de hacer la entrevista la importación que trajo Leones del Caracas en la temporada 2008-2009, y si mal no recuerdo, tú no estabas inicialmente en esa lista. Creo que hubo un pitcher que se llama Cedric Powers que decidió no venir a última hora, si no estoy equivocado, y después te contrataron a ti. Pero además, en tu primer juego diste un home run ante las Águilas, tu antiguo club. ¿Cómo recuerdas tu debut con los Melenudos? Against the Águilas, <laughs> your, your former team. How yeah. do you remember that debut with Leones? Um, yeah, I, I didn't know the situation with the pitcher not coming. Uh, I remember just sitting at home and I got a phone call, um, you know, asking uh, me to come play. And so I went down. Um, but uh, I think from day one when I got there, it was just I felt comfortable. Okay. Um, I don't know why. I think it I think maybe um, just being with a, a, a better team and the fans uh as enthusiastic as they are um they uh i think that just made it that made it comfortable for me to um you know go down there and and start playing you know it was it was easy for me that season was great for you ese año tuviste una muy buena temporada llegaste a dar 10 honrones con los leones y encontré dos curiosidades diste cuadrangular en tu primer juego como ya dije y además la sacaste en tu primer partido contra los navegantes del Magallanes. Contra ellos específicamente tuviste grandes números siempre. ¿A qué crees que se debe eso? You know, I think about it all the time. Um, in those games, there's so many fans in the in the crowd. You know, there's every, it's sold out. And I think, you know, thinking about my career and and you know, some people uh, in that situation they don't play very well. Um, I felt like I was the opposite. I felt like I um, was able to, under that type of pressure, was better for me as a player. Um, 
compared to playing in the minor leagues where not too many people are there. Um, the, the game is not as exciting. You have to go out there every day and, and find a way to get excited to play. Um, but playing against the, those, those, those games against Magallanes, you know, everything is so exciting that, you know, it was just, I just felt like it was, that was my, that's, that's how I played it, but that's how I played the best. And so that, that pressure going out there every time was, was fun. And I think that helped me to relax, uh, you know, as, as weird as that might sound. <laughs> You, you remember the Josh, ¿recuerdas específicamente ese primer juego contra Magallanes? Porque ese día te fuiste de 4-2 con Honrón, dos anotadas y dos empujadas. Fue el primer momento en donde dijiste, aquí comienza una gran carrera de Josh Kroger con los Leones. With Leones. Yeah, I remember um, the home run that I hit because it was off an American. Uh, it was a left-handed, I think his name was Rundles, Rich Rundles or something like that. Okay. He was a sidearm left-hander, um, and I remember having that conversation with the, the hitting coach at, uh, before I went to hit against him because he threw a, like a really slow EFIS curveball, like 60 miles an hour, um, and I remember he threw at me that pitch with a 3-2 count, and that's the pitch that I hit um, for the home run, and so I think it was a grand slam maybe, actually. I don't, I don't remember. Um, But uh, I think there were a couple couple runners on base. Okay. Uh, but I think that that moment was again exciting for me, and then just to see the reaction from the from the fans. I didn't I didn't know going into it how much of a rivalry there was between the two teams. I didn't I didn't know anything about that. So um, I think you know seeing that um, and then going into You know, obviously, hit, to hit that home run, I think that that made me want to want to keep playing and you know keep coming back for more. Josh, of course. Josh, una cosa es escuchar sobre la rivalidad entre Caracas y Magallanes, cosa que acabas de decir que no habías escuchado mucho sobre ella, y otra es vivirla. ¿Cómo recuerdas ese primer partido cuando viste a 20, 25 mil personas en el estadio José Bernardo Pérez de Valencia? ¿Y cómo recuerdas tu primer turno? ¿Qué memorias tienes de ese primer partido ante los navegantes del Magallanes? ¿Y cómo recuerdas haberlo vivido? Well, like I was saying just now, I was, I was surprised because I didn't I didn't know about that rivalry as much. I, I, you know, playing with with the Aguilas, we never we never saw that that kind of uh, you know support in the stands. You know, not a lot of people came to the games, um, so to see that was surprising. But um, you know, that's what you always want to play baseball for, or at least I thought it was. You know, to play in front of that many people and for it to be exciting like that. So. Um, You know, my first memory of that was, my wow, this is this is awesome. You know, um, this is why you know I want to continue to play baseball to be be a part of of a, of a team and be an important part of the team in a you know like playing it. You know, if you're playing for the Red Sox against the Yankees, you want to be the one that hits the home run against another team, right? So um, that was kind of that was my impression um, of it. But how Josh, ¿tú recuerdas cómo surgió la idea del sobrenombre de la pesadilla? ¿Cómo te enteraste que te llamaban así y cómo fue que empezó eso? Um, it's really funny because I didn't know what was happening until I think Escaño was the one that told me. You understand what they're what they're calling you? I said I don't know what they're saying. You know, um, you know, for me, a lot of times when I play, and and some, I'm sure any any fan that would, you would talk to would say, you know. I don't talk a lot during the game. I'm all, I'm always focused, so I'm not I'm not listening to everything around me. But uh, you know, one day I, I noticed I'm like, what is what are they playing? What is the music they're playing? Like, you don't understand. Um, you know, so how it started was my name. My last name is Kroger, right? Yeah. Um, but the pronunciation uh, they say, they said Kruger. You know, um, you know, just the language barrier. You know, that's how that's how they pronounce my name. So. Uh, 
Freddy Krueger is one of the, you know, uh, famous, you know, movie, yeah. movie series or, you know, whatever. So uh, that combined with me having a good season. And I guess the joke was I was a nightmare for pitchers, you know, to, to face because, you know, I'm going to get a hit, you know, or hit home run, whatever. So um, that's really how it, it started. Um, I wish I knew who came up with the idea because I like to shake their hand, you know. That's, I, I, think, uh, I think it was Chema, the, the announcer, I think. You think so? Yeah. I think so. Chema, great announcer too, by the way. Um, uh, you know, that that's something that not everybody gets, and that's part of my – career that I'll always remember uh people still call me that all the time now you know <laughs> so um you know that definitely stuck so I'm grateful for for whoever started it but you have Te tuviste que ir ese año en diciembre de los leones del caracas fue una temporada importante para ese equipo porque llegaron a la final contra los tigres y en esa temporada tuviste una gran campaña diste 10 honrones y terminaste con casi 400 de porcentaje de envasado lo cual es asombroso. ¿Qué sentiste cuando tuviste que marcharte y no pudiste jugar en los playoffs? Well, I, I don't know if anybody knew what happened, but the last play of the game, I think we and it was in Maracaibo. Uh, yeah. I stretched for a ball at first base and I actually pulled my hamstring on that play. Oh, okay. It was the last. It was the last play of the game. Um, so wow. you know, nobody really know, knew what happened, but I. I almost tore my hamstring, so I had to go back home and rehab. Um, and it actually was still bothering me in spring training. So, um, you know, I would have liked to come back for playoffs, uh, but I, I wasn't healthy. I couldn't, I couldn't play. Okay. Una vez en tu casa, Josh, seguías los partidos de postemporada. Los Tigres fueron un gran rival de los Leones por esos años y entonces tuvieron una gran temporada. Ambos equipos llegaron a la final pero los melenudos cayeron. ¿Lo pudiste seguir y cómo te sentías de no poder estar allí? You know, I don't, I don't really, really remember following it too much. Um, I think between rehabbing my leg and getting ready for spring training, and I also had my daughter that year, um, my first year that she was born. So, uh, I think I was preoccupied and I didn't really follow it too much. Um, okay. But I think, um, you know, coming back the next year and when we won the championship, um, you know, that, that really kind of solidified, you know, I started always watching the standings and, you know, always, you know, following the players that played down there. I think, I think after 2008, I was, you know, um, more more interested in it and rather it, and it was part of you know my everyday life instead of just you know going down to play a couple of months for a winter ball you know al año siguiente volviste con los leones del caracas pero creo que antes de venir fue tu matrimonio y no pudiste llegar al inicio de la campaña incluso recuerdo a la gente eh, pensando que cuando ibas a, a venir a venezuela Llegaste a finales de octubre. ¿Cómo recuerdas aquello? In the final part of October. How do you remember that? Um, so, no, I, I didn't get married that year. Oh. Um, that year we went to play uh, in Europe with Team USA. Oh, okay. okay. So we actually left, I actually left the season in the United States in September, in uh, August. Uh, I missed the last month of the season, I believe. Okay. Um, And we went to Germany to play for the, the World Cup. Okay. So um, when I got back, um, I think I was only home for maybe two weeks. And then I came back down to Venezuela. So um, part of me, too, you know, I think the following year, I also came back in, in October or November. I think I wanted to have a little bit of time to rest so that I was 100% when I came back down. That year was important. Ese año fue muy importante para los Leones del Caracas. Finalmente lograron el ansiado campeonato, pero fue un año donde la rivalidad con Magallanes fue especialmente intensa, más de lo normal, porque ambos equipos estuvieron repartiendo los dos primeros lugares de la tabla de posiciones durante todo el campeonato, incluyendo la postemporada, hasta que ambos quedaron finalistas. 
Creo que mucha gente recuerda ese torneo y esa final en especial, pero queríamos que tú lo recordaras también. How do you remember that? Um, I remember that as being the most exciting part of baseball for me uh, to win the championship that year was, you know, I never won anything before um, and nothing in the middle of a rivalry like that. I've never been a part of something like that. Um, but I remember, you know, the home run that Gregor Blanco hit off of uh, yeah. K-Rod. I think that was the, that was the, that was the most memorable part of that, that series because Um, there was a lot of talking back and forth and, you know, that was, that was one, some, one of the best, that was one of the best things I've ever seen. Josh. Josh, al momento de ese jonrón, Magallanes ganaba 7 a 6. Si hubieran hecho ese último out, la serie se ponía 3 a 1 a favor de Magallanes y ustedes quedaban contra la pared. Pero ese cuadrangular de Gregor Blanco cambió todo. ¿Cómo recuerdas aquel momento? Porque es uno de los más importantes en los últimos años en la LBP. Well, like I, like I said, there was a there was a lot of trash talk before before that at bat. I think uh, something happened, and I don't I don't remember what it was, but Gregor had said something to one of the pitchers in the yeah. other dugout, and about a bunt maybe I, I can't remember what it was, but. Uh, You know, he hit that home run and he's pounding his chest and, and running around the bases. That, that's, you don't really see that in the United States because people get their feelings hurt too much. Um, so that I really remember that as, you know, baseball on a different, different level where you can, you can play and, and talk trash to the other team and it's still exciting. And, uh, you know, it, there's, a, there's a different level of competition there. And then you... Después de... Esa situación con Gregor, tú estabas en segunda base y Jackson Melian da el jonrón para dejar en el terreno al Magallanes y empatar la serie. ¿Qué recuerdos te vienen cuando hablas de eso? Creo que ese es uno de los juegos más recordados en los últimos 15 años en la Liga Venezolana de Béisbol Profesional. ¿Con cuánta frecuencia recuerdas aquello y cómo te sientes ahora en esta entrevista al hablar de ello? Um, I remember it all the time. Um... You know, I, I see it every once in a while on Instagram. I'll okay. scroll through, and our team was so good at every every part. You know, every single position, somebody at one point did something great in that series. So, um, you know, again, first championship that I ever ever won anywhere, um, and to be a part of it like that, and and my teammates too. I think I was the only American down there at the time. Wow. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how, very, how many other Americans were there for the for the playoffs, but uh, you know they they began to treat me like their family, and I think that was what um, was the best experience for me to be a part of a team. Um, you know, and my experience in the major leagues was not very good because there was no team chemistry. You know, okay. Um, a lot of, they, they had a losing season that year, and a lot of us were young players coming up. Uh, So, you know, to me, playing in that series and playing for Caracas, that was like the big leagues for me. Um, better than playing in the major leagues here in the United States. In that, in that season... Josh, una de las razones por las cuales esa temporada fue tan intensa y sobre todo esa final fue porque ambos equipos tenían grandes nombres en su nómina. En el caso del Magallanes tenían a Pablo Sandoval, a Robinson Chirinos, Recuerdo a Raúl Valdés con Magallanes, a quien al Caracas le costó ganarle. Y en el caso de los Leones tenían a Celestino López, a Gregor Blanco, a Gustavo Chacín, a Jackson Melián. Pero esa final arrancó con dos derrotas en Valencia, después empataron la serie en los dos primeros compromisos en Caracas y se tuvieron que regresar a la casa del Magallanes abajo en la serie 3-2. De lo que puedas recordar, ¿cómo viviste esa final? Was a great team. Uh, how do you remember that? Well, I think, uh, and you said it before, if we didn't win that game, that last game uh, at home, we would have been down three to zero or three to one. But after that game, I felt like uh, that changed, you know, our our mindset moving forward. Um, 
you know, I used to watch, you know, Frankie Rodriguez, one of the best pitchers in the league for a long time. So, um, you know, I hit a home run off of him, I think, in the fourth game, maybe. Um, yeah. And when you do something like that against a great player, you don't you don't think about you know how you know how good the other team is how what what players they have you just you see it as the game now because you know you can you hit off the best and you know you don't the the fear goes away you know um, but Pablo Sandoval was a he was whenever he came to the plate though he was he was he had a great year that year that was one of his best years that I remember um, so that definitely. Um, playing right field when he came up to hit was not was not too much fun. Josh, I talk with Josh. En una entrevista anterior, yo hablé con Jackson Menian sobre aquella final y él me comentó que cuando ustedes perdieron los dos primeros partidos en Valencia y vinieron a Caracas había un silencio total en el autobús y después tuvieron que ir a Valencia con la serie 3 a 2 en contra con la situación de que Magallanes solo tenía que ganar uno de sus dos partidos en casa. ¿Cómo recuerdas que viviste todo ese vaivén de emociones durante esta final que fue tan intensa y que tuvo tantos momentos importantes? Dealing with that is what I need. Um, well, I think as a, as a team, I think we knew that we were capable of winning. We just, you know, we... My, my guys was a great, great team that year. Um, but I think as a player, you know, I mentioned how I wasn't ready when I first went to the, to the major leagues to play. Those are the kind of things that you notice that are different because I think me as a player at 22 years old, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been able to, to, to do well in that situation. But I think then I was a little bit more mature and I was able to handle that stress. And so that to me was the fun part coming for back from behind to, 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 to beat that team. Um, you know, that I remember that as, you know, a challenge that I was ready for at that time and maybe not when I was when I was younger. Um, you know, and. Like I said, just being being a part of that was 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 awesome. Uh, what do you remember? Y después de todo lo que atravesaron durante esa final, que ya lo hemos repasado en este video, Josh, ¿qué recuerdas de la celebración del último out? Sobre todo después de lo que pasó en esa serie, la intensidad con la que se vivió e ir a, las, a Margarita a la serie del Caribe. Margarita, to the, to the Caribbean series and, and everything. Um, I think that um, the... the The funniest part about that that I remember was uh, Gutierrez came out to finish the the eighth and ninth inning, and the lights went out <laughs> in the stadium. Yeah, true, that too. I, I and <laughs> we were convinced that there was a conspiracy that they were trying to they were trying to you know ice the pitcher you know because he was he was hot ready to come in the game and the lights went out. <laughs> so um, that I remember that very very clearly i thought they were they were they were doing everything they can they didn't want to lose to caracas at home you know yeah um but then the celebration was was awesome i think uh no that i didn't make the cat i don't know if i made the the last the final out um i think part? that was with, that was with caribes i think that i caught the the last the last fly ball um but no the, the celebration was awesome um you know it was kind of I don't really, it's kind of a blur. I don't really remember specifically celebrating. I just remember um, drinking a lot of beer and <laughs> celebrating. <laughs> Josh, and then... Josh, y después finalmente regresaste para la temporada 2010 con los Leones del Caracas después de conseguir ese campeonato. ¿Recuerdas cómo te recibieron en el estadio universitario? Porque fuiste una de las figuras claves para conseguir ese trofeo y todo lo que significaste para la fanaticada de los Leones del Caracas, ¿cómo recuerdas ese recibimiento en esa campaña? Well, I remember 
that season in the United States was my worst season. Okay. Um, with the White Sox that, that year, I hit 200, 202, I think, on the season. And so coming back down there and the, the fans receiving me the way that they did, I think it gave me the confidence that I needed um, and to win the MVP that year because, um, you know, each, each time that I come to, come to the plate and they, they recognize me and people are talking to me while I'm on deck, you know, that, that builds and gives a hitter confidence. And when a hitter has confidence, he he's, can be a dangerous player, you know. Josh, lo que estás diciendo ahorita es bastante importante porque estás comentando que venías de tu peor temporada en las ligas menores pero después aquí tuviste uno de tus mejores desempeños con los Leones del Caracas e incluso te llevaste el MVP ¿Qué cambió y qué crees que fue lo fundamental para tener esa temporada? You know, I had a bad season in the United States but only with the numbers, right? So I hit a lot of balls hard and I just had bad luck that year. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I give a lot of credit to the fans for giving me the confidence to have the season that I, that I did down there. Um, first of all, but, um, you know, second of all, I think that was just the time in my career that I was, I was continuing to get better. Um, and, you know, from 2008, when, like I said, I kind of changed from, from my younger years, that year was kind of the year that I figured it out, uh, hitting wise. And Josh, uh, that year... Josh, ese año te pasaron muchas cosas importantes después de ganar el torneo anterior con los Leones del Caracas, porque además de ganar el MVP, te convertiste en el pelotero extranjero con más jonrones en la historia de los merenudos. Ese año... En medio de la campaña diste tu cuadrangular número 19 con la franquicia y pasaste a Pit Kogel. Lo hiciste además ante los navegantes del Magallanes. ¿Recuerdas aquel momento, ese y otros logros que conseguiste ese año, por supuesto? Um, you know, I don't remember that that part specifically. I I, I don't remember um, uh, passing that. I don't I don't remember that being a, a milestone. Um, what I remember the most is uh, towards the end of the season them starting to to cheer for me for the MVP and I said and I would hear it in the in the stands MVP MVP and I'm like and I think it was uh, I can't think of his name the second baseman uh, with Caribes what was his name yeah Marista yeah Marista so I think we were we were we were yeah. just right there with each other for batting average too um, and so you know that That was that was the most memorable part for me was that not not the home runs. Okay. Josh, ¿y cómo recibiste significando eso tanto para ti la noticia de que fuiste el MVP? Yeah, I was I was proud. I mean, I you know, has there ever been a American that won has won MVP down there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um I I thought it was a, a great accomplishment for me because I never, I didn't, you know, being a, being a foreign player down there um, and getting the votes from the fans, you know, it's, you know, I could have, they could have easily voted for him, for Amarista. He had just a good of a year, but uh, that gave me even more confidence because it showed me that the fans actually respected me, you know, as a player. Yeah. Creo que llegó uno de los momentos más importantes de esta entrevista, por lo que representó ese momento y por lo importante que es marcó y que aún la gente lo recuerda. Una semana antes de ser nombrado jugador más valioso de la liga, los Leones se estaban enfrentando a los Tigres de Aragua y los Bengalíes ganaban 3 a 2. Era el octavo innings y no había outs. Gregor Blanco estaba en segunda base y Asdrúbal Cabrera en primera. Y tú venías al bate. En ese momento Dave Hodgins mandó a que tocaras la pelota. Por lo que tú significaste ese año y lo que estabas bateando, es probable que haya habido una buena posibilidad de que al menos una carrera empujaras en ese momento. ¿Qué pensaste cuando viste la seña y Hodgins te había mandado a tocar? You know, as a manager, he's he's been around the game a long time. Uh, yeah. I was facing a left-handed pitcher. 
I think he wanted to avoid the double play at okay. that time. So I understand what he was thinking. Um, you know, at that time I was I was feeling really good at the plate though, hitting wise too. So I wanted to swing the bat. Um, but when he told me that, I was honestly kind of a little scared to bunt because I don't I don't like bunting off of left-handed pitchers. And I think the guy was kind of sidearm left-hander. Yeah. It was uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable, you know. Uh, and I hadn't bunted in a long time either. So, um, you know, that was that was a tough situation. I felt I felt terrible when I, you know, I think I struck out or uh, yeah. struck out trying to bunt, um, and that was you know not good. But, um, you know, I had I had so much confidence, I, I guess, in in myself and my team that year that it didn't didn't bother me as much as it as it should as it might have um, at a different time. But uh, I think. You know, everybody asked me, why did, why did Hudgens, you know, ask you to bunt? But, you know, I respected him so much as a manager that I didn't, I didn't second guess his decision on that. I, I... Josh, debo confesarte que no esperaba esa respuesta para nada. Yo bajé inclusive el video con las declaraciones del, después del juego de Dave Hudgens, en donde dijo que volvería a tomar la misma decisión para evitar el doble play. Y yo pensé muchas veces... ¿En qué estaría pensando Josh en ese momento? Sobre todo cuando te insistió a que tocaras la pelota en dos strikes. ¿Crees que fue la decisión correcta? He insists to ask you to bond the ball with two strikes. Do you think that was uh, the call? That was the right call? Yeah, I think so. I, you you get a feeling as a manager, um, <clears throat> and I guess now looking back on it, now that I'm coaching uh, baseball too. You get a you get a certain feeling sometimes that 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 in your stomach that it's the right thing to do at this this right time. Sometimes it might be, I think this player is going to be the one tonight that I want to hit him in this spot in the lineup, or I, I want to pinch it for this guy, or I want to use this pitcher right now, or sometimes maybe right now is the right time to bunt. So I think in that situation that was the best thing. And uh, I think Jesus Guzman always hit behind me that year, yeah. so. He was had a hot bat too at the time, so 100%. You know, Dave is a smart guy, so you know, um, I you know I respect him and his decision decision making with that. And Josh, when you Josh, cuando fallaste el toque de pelota y te ponchaste y solo perdieron por una carrera, habiendo tenido la carrera del empate y la del gane en circulación, pensaste que quizás las cosas pudieron ser diferentes en ese momento pues estabas en un buen momento ofensivo. Yeah, you know, you always as a player think you can do it every time. If you don't, then you're not going to be very good. Yeah. So, um I I thought that for sure. I I thought that I could have, but you know, that like I said, that was the right thing to do as a manager right that that time. Um if he didn't tell me to bunt and I hit into a double play, you know, you know, you never know what's going to happen. Um but If it was a right-handed pitcher, then I would have thought maybe a little different. Okay. Uh, but because it was a left-handed pitcher, I think that's why um, that he did, that he called that. Um, so, you know, I was disappointed that I that didn't do my job, um, but you know, it ended up working out. And Josh, uh... Josh, aquel año los Leones del Caracas fallaron de ir a la final por tercer año consecutivo por un solo partido. Creo que perdieron un juego extra contra los Tigres de Aragua para definir al último finalista. ¿Crees que esa decisión de Hodgins pudo al final significar algo trascendental en la historia de esa postemporada? Came something. Yeah, you know, if I if I do my job there and we win the game, you know, maybe their confidence is is better, maybe you know, a lot of the different things could happen. So, um, uh, you know, I, I take responsibility for that. Um, and I think, yeah, it could have, could have definitely been different. Um, but I don't think you can all, I don't think you can, it's easy to look at a situation like that and say, if that, if that one play was different, then maybe you could have gone to the final. Well, yeah. there's plenty of games that we lost that on a different circumstance that, maybe we aren't in that position, you know, at that time. So I don't, I don't, I don't ever think you can, you can say that one play decides the determines, you know, 
the fate of the team for the for the season. Okay. Josh, and then Josh, después de que fueron eliminados por los Tigres de Aragua en el partido extra, fuiste tomado en el draft de la final por los Caribes de Anzuategui. Y recuerdo que ellos tuvieron que buscarte un helicóptero para trasladarte hasta Puerto La Cruz. ¿Cómo fue esa experiencia con Caribes? Y que todo eso pasara en cuestión de horas. Asumir lo que había ocurrido con los Leones del Caracas e integrarte a Caribes para ir hasta la final. Precisamente ante los Tigres que recién los habían eliminado. Y al final, con el resultado de haber ganado esa serie con la tribu. With Caribes against Tigres, and then won with them the championship. How do you remember that experience? I remember it being, uh, and it may be a little bit selfish for, for me, but um, I remember telling them that I I would only play if I played with Caribes. Okay. I didn't want to play with, with the Tigres. Oh. Um, well, I don't know. Because they eliminated you. Well, I think the rivalry for, for me against that team was – was was more and I you know I, I wanted to beat them I didn't want to play with them okay um no, no 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 disrespect to anybody on the on that team but I wanted to beat I wanted to beat them and and Buddy Bailey was my old manager for from Iowa the Chicago oh, oh. so I wanted to beat him too <laughs> <laughs> so uh you know that was my first memory there but you know picking being able to go in the helicopter that was a uh very great experience for me too because again um to see that you know that they don't do that for everybody yeah. you know so you know i again seeing that was was saw that they they had a lot of respect for me and i was i was very happy and uh uh what am i trying to say uh grateful i was grateful that they you know took care of me like that um yeah uh, sí en efecto josh si un equipo busca un helicóptero para trasladarte hasta Puerto La Cruz es porque con tu desempeño te lo ganaste y te lo merecías por todo tu historial en Venezuela. Right, right. So that, I was grateful for that, and you know, it. Uh, I'm a pretty humble person, so I, you know, I don't, I don't really get a big head too much. Um, but that was, I was kind of proud to 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 ride in the helicopter that time. I, I never been in the helicopter in my life. So that, that's my only memory of a helicopter is in Venezuela. <laughs> Wow. And then you... Y se te dio lo que querías, Josh. Lograste vencer a los Tigres de Aragua y a Body Bailey. ¿Qué recuerdas de aquello? ¿Hablaste con Bailey después de eso? You know, I've not, I've not talked to Buddy Bailey. <laughs> I don't think ever, may, except for maybe in BP saying, hey, how you doing? Uh, I don't have a problem with him, but he, he just, he's a different, he's a different character, you know? Um, so we, our personality is a little bit different. So uh, I actually never never really talked to him but uh, it was I was I was really really happy to to have beat them and um you know during that series I got really sick down there too I got the flu um so that was a it was a tough week I remember going to Puerto La Cruz and uh he was my he took care of me down there um you know and if it wasn't for him I'd have been in, in bad shape because I got really sick uh luckily we had an off day and I think that day I had to go accept the MVP award Yeah. Um, and that was tough. I, 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 all I wanted to do was lay down. I couldn't, I couldn't hardly, couldn't hardly stand up. So that was a, a really long week. Um, you know, great that we won, but I was, I was ready to go home after that. <laughs> but, Pero a pesar de que fue una semana larga para ti y que te sentías mal de salud, tuviste un gran desempeño en esa final, Josh. E incluso diste un par de honrones. Fuiste de gran ayuda para Caribes en esa final. Yeah, and one of them off of uh, Orber, Orber uh, yeah. Moreno. So uh, I, we actually talked about that before the yeah. game. I'm going to take you deep, and he and I actually did. It was it was uh, it was funny. He's he's a he's a great 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 teammate. Yeah, um, yeah that was uh, you know I, I didn't play as well as I as I did during the season, uh, you know. But um, I think I got a, a couple, like I said, two home runs that were you know at a good time and. Después de esa serie final, Josh, ¿te ocurrió la lesión en los Estados Unidos donde te lastimaste mientras estabas celebrando 
un hit de tu equipo en, en las sucursales de los Marlins de Florida. Necesitaste una operación en tu rodilla. ¿Cómo fue el momento de la lesión, la operación y cómo te sentiste después de no haber podido venir ese año a Venezuela cuando eras el MVP reinante? Come to Venezuela after winning the MVP. Yeah, that was probably the worst worst part of my career. Um, and it was just bad luck. I don't know. It was bad luck. Uh, you know, I, I, I wish that would have never happened. Um, in a lot of ways, that ended my career, too. Um, because that was, you know, that year with Florida was one of my best years again since, since 2008 with the Cubs, 2007. Um, and I thought I was going to go back to the major leagues again, finally. Uh, and that happened and it was all over from there. Um, just unfortunate, stupid. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how else to explain that. Um, but then, you know, and then not even being able to come back to play in Venezuela again. Um, so that was, that was really hard too. That was a hard, hard year for me. Um, and even the next year too, uh, I think the next in 2012, I think they got a different GM uh, that year, um, or there was a change in the front office. So, um, yeah, I believe oh. so. Um, you know, and and I had a decent year, but not not great, not very not great um, with Caracas. So, um, not necessarily because of the, the injury, but I think I had a lot to do with it. Josh, mencionas eso, pero ese año diste los cuadrangulares en contra de Jan Machi, que la gente recuerda bastante. De hecho, es uno de los videos más vistos tuyos en YouTube. También te operaron aquí en Venezuela y dos semanas después ayudaste a los Leones a ganarle en un par de oportunidades a los navegantes del Magallanes. Yo creo que la gente no recuerda tan mal ese año como lo estás describiendo tú. Yeah, that that was uh, <laughs> probably the most memorable home run I think oh. that I that I ever hit um, because just because the the just the competition between me and and Machi he knew that I, I'd hit well off of him. Um, but I knew, and I also knew how great of a pitcher he is too, you know? Um, and it was just a mind, it was a mind game to me. I, I felt like it was, I felt like we were thinking, you know, I, I see the, the, the video of that, of that, um, that, at, that at bat. And I, I look at, at him and how he was thinking and, and, you know, You'll never understand, I guess, until, you know, you're in a situation like that. But uh, I knew he was going to throw me a, a split 3-2, and he threw it. And I was just, I was, you know, I was, I was waiting for it. Um, so, but, he, you know, he also hung it, too. He threw it, too. He threw it high. If he would have made a good pitch right there, he probably strikes me out. Um, What do you think? ¿Cuál crees que fue la clave para tener ese éxito contra Jan Machi? Well, it was the la it was my last home run that I hit off of him. Yeah, yeah. Because it, he threw a, a split three and two, and that's what I hit. I hit a home run to center field. So, in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, he's a he's a very aggressive type pitcher, and he wanted to beat me, and he didn't think that I should have, you know, hit a home run off of him last time. I think, and so I think he wanted to throw the same pitch in the same situation and beat me that time. So that's, that's how I remember it. Josh, ¿cuál fue la lesión que sufriste ese año? Creo, si no me equivoco, que te tomó muy poco tiempo recuperarte, aproximadamente unas dos semanas. Cover fast in two weeks, I guess. Yeah, that was a, it was a surgery for staph infection. Okay. So uh, I actually got an infection, um, that made me really sick uh, and I couldn't get out, I couldn't get out of bed. It was like, um, it's a very dangerous type of uh, sickness. You could die from that. So um, 
I remember they had to they did surgery on it, and then I had to go home to recover um, for a couple of weeks, and then I came back. ¿Cómo te sentiste cuando te enteraste que tenías esa bacteria, Josh, porque venías arrastrando varias cosas encima? Por ejemplo, la lesión que habías sufrido en Estados Unidos, que te impidió volver a las grandes ligas, que tampoco te permitió jugar aquí en Venezuela ese año, y después te pasa esto. Um, you know, that, that injury was different because it was not something I could have, you know, it's not, not like I got hurt playing, but, you know, I wasn't, didn't do it while I was playing. So it was just a sickness. Um, so I, that didn't really affect me, um, you know, like it maybe would have um, if I had pulled my hamstring again or something, you know, um, those type of injuries are harder to recover from. Al año siguiente, los Leones del Caracas decidieron no extenderte un contrato, Josh. Y creo recordar que te dijeron que vinieras a Venezuela a los entrenamientos para tratar de ganarte un puesto y para ver en el estado en que te encontrabas. ¿Hablaste con ellos sobre eso? ¿Cómo te sentiste sobre toda esa situación? Yeah, so management offered they they said they they didn't know if they wanted to to sign me on another contract that I was going to come to to spring training with them as a for as a tryout. Okay. Uh and I felt a little bit disrespected that way because I've had so many good years with them um that uh I felt like I didn't have to to try out for the for their team. Um I think one one issue there though was because in the United States I got released that year um in 2013 and so I didn't play I only played one one month in, uh in independent ball. So I think their concern was that I didn't have enough time playing that I wasn't going to be ready. Um I think looking back on it if if they would have extended me a contract to play I would have got myself ready. I would have I would have played uh independent ball uh for longer, but because they didn't um you know uh, I don't know. It could have went it could have went either way, but uh um I was definitely not happy that I didn't have that that chance again to play with them. And then how Josh, ¿cómo fue el acercamiento con los Bravos de Margarita para venir un último año a Venezuela? Well, uh I think I I didn't play for one year uh, and I talked to Luis Jimenez um on telephone and he said, "Hey, why don't you come and play for for Margarita?" So I uh, you know, um I think I wanted to go down there one one more time. Uh, I wanted to see the fans again. I wanted to play again. Um, and I and I, that that year was was tough. You know, after my after my knee injury and after I didn't sign with Crocus the next year, uh, I had some some personal problems that had too, and some problems with my family also. So, um, you know, I, I just wanted to have an opportunity down there to. Um, play one more time in front of really in front of the fans in, in Caracas more than than to to be very very good with with Margarita. And then you Josh, y precisamente tuviste ese último juego contra los Leones del Caracas en el que fuiste muy bien recibido por la afición, te dieron una gran ovación ese día. ¿Cómo lo recuerdas? I think that was what I what I needed. Uh, that's what I, that's the, one of the, the reason why I, I came back to play with Margarita was for that. And, and when they received me that way, um, you know, that was a, a good way to, to finish my career, you know, um, probably the best, uh, feeling, I guess, um, that I've, that I've had, you know, since, since leaving the team. So, um, you know, I wish I could have played longer with with them but I think that that standing ovation that they that they gave me was was special. And Josh, Josh, pensaste que tal vez cuando dejaste a los bravos de Margarita, tal vez ese era el momento en que ya te tocaba retirarte y que no ibas a poder volver a jugar béisbol y que no ibas a volver a Venezuela tampoco. Yeah, so yeah, I had to make the decision um You know, like I said, I had some some family troubles. I was going to 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 court with uh, custody with my daughter, and 
Um, my wife was pregnant with my son. Um, so I, I really had to make a decision to, to be there, be at home with my family and, and not, um, not play anymore. Um, it was a hard, very hard decision to make, but one that I, that I decided to make. And you, Al momento de estar en el avión de regreso, pensaste que no ibas a volver a jugar. I, I could play, you know, if you if if you give me six months right now and get me in shape, I'll go down there and play again. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, you know, it just I didn't think that I was done playing that I couldn't play. I just knew that my obligation with my family was more important. Yes. Josh, venir a Venezuela como un jugador extranjero, lograr todas las cosas que conseguiste en el país y recibir todo el cariño de la afición, sentir cómo los fanáticos te recuerdan bastante bien, ¿qué significa eso para ti? Um, that really it means everything for me in my career because like I, like I keep saying, the United States was not too exciting for me, you know, playing baseball. Um, I had some opportunities, but spent most of my years in the minor leagues. Playing in, in for Caracas in that atmosphere with those fans is, is not, is, there's nothing like it in baseball. Um, you know, some might say that, you know, I, I played in Mexico before. I've never played in, um, in the Dominican Republic, but to me, that's the most exciting you can ever make a baseball game. And so, That to me is everything that I remember my career is playing in, in Caracas. And what means? Josh, me imagino que ya esta pregunta, o sé muy bien que ya esta pregunta la respondiste, pero te la quiero hacer específicamente. ¿Qué significa Venezuela para ti? I think, I think Venezuela saved my, my career in baseball. I think it did. I think playing, playing in Caracas saved my career in baseball because um, it gave me more another life, you know. Uh, And then the people that I met down there, the players and my teammates, um, the way they accepted me as their, as their, as their teammate, um, you know, I, I assume, you know, the relationship politically between the United States and Venezuela, not too good, you know, uh, Venezuelans don't really receive Americans very well, you know. Um, so to be in that situation to where fans actually respect me and people respect me down there, Uh, you know, I'll always remember Venezuela. And I'll always have respect for for anybody who is Venezuelan or, or you know, from especially from from Caracas. And, and they keep writing you. Josh, los fanáticos te siguen escribiendo por las redes sociales. Bueno, de hecho, esta entrevista que te estoy haciendo la conseguí gracias a que hemos estado en comunicación por Facebook y por allí muchísima gente te escribe. ¿Qué significa eso para ti? ¿Cómo recibes esos mensajes, sobre todo después de que ha pasado tanto tiempo desde la última vez que jugaste? You play here. Uh -huh. I think it's, it's special, you know, and, and uh, the, the fact that they continue to still message me and say hello and say thank you for everything that, that, I've, that I've done playing, you know, it's, that's what, um, aside, aside from wanting to uh, be the, a great player, I think for me, one of the most important parts is to be respected by fans as a good player. Um, and so to, to have that still now, and it's been six years, almost, almost six years since I stopped playing baseball, um, that's awesome. That's awesome. And Josh, uh, do you, I know that right now it's impossible. Josh, sé que en este momento es imposible pensar en eso por todo lo que está ocurriendo. Pero en el futuro, cuando las cosas mejoren, ¿te gustaría venir a Venezuela y compartir una velada con tus ex compañeros, por ejemplo, Orber, que se la pasa en el estadio, Víctor, que el año pasado fue el manager de los Leones, etcétera? ¿Es, es una posibilidad en el futuro, cuando toda la situación se regularice? En el futuro, cuando, por supuesto, Venezuela will improve la situación. I think I would like that, you know, and, um, you know, like I said, It took me a couple years to kind of transition, you know, from baseball. And so, you know, now I mentioned, you know, my current job. Uh, my hope is to get more involved back in with the game and with players and, and have, you know, 
uh, closer relationships and do business with them. So, you know, I hope to have the opportunity to, you know, I, I hope I can go to the winter meetings this year uh, in Texas um, to see some of the, you know, the old guys again and, um, you know, continue to, to develop some more relationships. So I, I think, you know, uh, you know, JC Boscan, I talked to him the other day. Uh, he's, he's, he's uh, coaching with the Kansas City now. Um, you know, I would, I would like to go back down to, to Venezuela one time and, you know, uh, just to, to say hello and, uh, you know, maybe see a baseball game, see some of the, the new players that are, you know, new exciting players down there. Yeah, one more question. Josh, ya para ir cerrando la entrevista. En Venezuela las reglas son que si un pelotero extranjero juega cinco años en la Liga Venezolana de Béisbol Profesional, es elegible para el Salón de la Fama del Béisbol Venezolano. Tú lo lograste y dejaste buenos números. ¿Crees que esa es una posibilidad para ti? Pronto debes aparecer en la boleta. ¿Crees que es una posibilidad para ti ser algún día exaltado al Salón de la Fama del Béisbol Venezolano? I hope so. Um, you know, that would be the, the, best, the best honor for me um, for that to happen. Um, I think that would be great for a story for me to tell my kids. Um, you know, that would that would put the icing on the cake, if you will. How do you, how do you say in, in, in America? You know, that that would be the um, that would top it off. You know, I, I I would I would really love for that to happen. Do I think it will happen? I don't know if I, my numbers are good enough. I don't know, um, but I hope I hope so. Josh, thank you very much. Josh, muchísimas gracias por esta entrevista, por el tiempo que nos has brindado en The Beat Writer. Ha sido un gran honor para mí tener esta conversación contigo. La he disfrutado muchísimo y espero que también hayas pasado un rato agradable con nosotros aquí en nuestro canal de YouTube. You know, I had a great time. Good talking. Good talking to you. Um, you know, I was surprised that I can still remember so much of what you know especially during you know some of the games you know i remember i still i still remember it specifically you know that that's how that's how important it was to me playing there you know i, I can still remember it like it was yesterday so um happy to happy to have talked to you i, I appreciate you, you giving me a call Josh, muchísimas gracias por haber estado con nosotros. Y espero que ustedes también hayan disfrutado de la entrevista de esta hora con Josh Kroger aquí en nuestro espacio en YouTube. Si es así, recuerden suscribirse al canal, es gratis y solamente le tienen que dar al botón rojo de suscribirse y a la campanita que está al lado y eso es todo para que contribuyan a que sigamos creciendo en nuestro canal. Yo soy Marcos Grunfeld, mis redes sociales las ven en pantalla y antes de despedirme, le mando saludos a la gente de la nave magallanera en Instagram, quienes compartieron un video de nosotros y por eso se ganan la posibilidad de llevarse un saludo de nuestro espacio el día de hoy. Les dejo la captura de la pantalla con la cuenta de la nave magallanera, a quienes le agradecemos que hayan compartido el video de Anthony Leriu y su nojito ron ante los Leones del Caracas. De este lado les voy a dejar dos videos para que sigan en sintonía de The Beat Writer y de este otro lado les dejo un botón para que se suscriban. Nos vemos en un próximo video.